On the 18th of December, 1941, U-552 is going to take a break from its usual raiding in the Black Pit. The BDU officials have decided to send U-552 south to attack the southern routes to the West African coast between the mainland and the Cape Verde Islands. High Command suspects that many ships flying neutral flags but supporting Allied war effort started crossing the Atlantic further south. Some of them are enemy ships using false flags to disguise themselves, while others are private ships with neutral countries trading with the blockaded ports of the enemy. For this reason, High Command orders U-boat skippers to inspect all neutral ships passing through this area to clarify their status. Our orders are to travel to sector DT9 to EK1 in the northeast Atlantic and travel 2,250 kilometers inside to complete the patrol. You may receive additional orders upon reaching the area. The anticipated number of vessels in the area is expected to be small. However, a minimum expectation of 7,000 tons of enemy trade ships is expected to be sunk. Intelligence advises strong winds are forecast in the area, which may impede periscope attacks. Hi everyone, welcome back on board U552. Here we are, heading down the African coast. Uh, we've passed, um, well, where Gibraltar would be, somewhere back there. Yeah, just coming past the West African coast now. And uh, yeah, we are looking for any enemy ships to sink, of course, but any neutral ships we will also be inspecting. It seems that like rather than crossing from America over the Atlantic to Great Britain, they're heading south and then doing a, a short crossing. It's, it's kind of similar to how the like the heavy bombers from America uh, and Canada, or say heavy bombers like B-17 and the B-24 from America, but also Lancasters made in uh, Canada were shipped over to the UK. Most of them went north, hopping to Greenland, to Iceland and then down. Um, but later on they were heading further south and crossing in the South Atlantic and then flying up um, as part of their uh, route and so we're suspecting a lot of the the trade ships are crossing south which is a little bit um, less distance but then heading north uh, under a neutral flags to try and get into the uh, Allied ports which is what we're here to stop uh, I thought it would be poignant to do today because it is the 25th of December 1941. It's Christmas Day. Christmas Day. And although we haven't got a tree, I decided not to get the tree because it would um, burden the men. Um, we are... Well, we're, we're, we're fighting fit. The, sh the boat's looking good. Um, she's uh, been cleaned up. Obviously a bit of, bit of weathering, but that's fine. We've got full spread of torpedoes. We've got a deck gun forward there which we can't see, full of ammo and we've got um, some anti-aircraft gun as well uh, so we're in good shape, we've got plenty of food and uh, we should be able to get the mileage to go down here, do our patrol and certainly head back to Brest without any problems whatsoever. So we're going to continue on, hopefully we should be in our patrol zone within the next day or two uh, and then by New Year we should be heading back to uh, home port. That's the plan, let's see how this goes and on the 31st of December 1941, 20 past 1 in the afternoon, uh, we received a communication from another U-boat. Convoy in sight, Naval Square DU-747, course 108 degrees, 7 knots. Uh, this message is followed by a bearing signal which you can track and source as long as the transmission stays active. So, this is within our patrol zone. So we're going to head north. I thought we'd be um, almost patrol over here. It's been uh, almost seven days since we last spoke as we were coming into our patrol zone, but we've spotted nothing. Absolute zip. So this will be the first sighting. So we will definitely react to this and uh, see if we can go and help this U-boat out. Hi, everyone. As you can see, it's a rough old night out here. Uh, we've responded to where that those bearing signals were coming from. Uh, they've now gone quiet. And we're out here in this storm and we can't um, detect anything. We've just been bashed and battered up here and getting absolutely drenched. So what I might do is dive down to 30-40 meters and just listen on the hydrophone 
Not only will it be a little bit more stable down there for the crews on the boat, they won't feel quite so ill. Um, we might be able to detect where these uh, convoy ships are. So that's what we're going to do. Let's um, let's uh, head down. Ich habe eine große Gruppe von Schiffen festgestellt. Vermutlich ein Geleitzug. Okay, we've come down to 50 meters and I'm not hearing anything. That's not good. That means we probably missed the convoy. Hmm, well, this is not good. Okay, we couldn't hear anything on the hydrophone, but uh, we've now surfaced again, and we've found the U-boat. That is the U-boat who uh, um, has been shadowing the convoy. So the convoy's gone past us. That's the U-boat there. Uh, so we need to head down here at um, much faster speed and try and get ahead of the convoy. We know they're doing seven knots, so if we can get faster than that, we might be able to get ahead of them and set up an ambush. Well then, all I can say is that we've got a very good hydrophone engineer, because, let me just show you this. Smoke on the horizon, yeah? Smoke on the horizon. Lots of smoke on the horizon. Oh my god, it's an entire forest fire of smoke on the horizon. That looks like a destroyer, that looks like a destroyer, but, right in the middle of it, there's a ship going the opposite direction. Um, we'll go and inspect this ship first, but yes, we found them. There's the smoke on the horizon. So we'll um, we'll deal with this ship first, and then look to uh, set up, head further south, and set up another attack for this what looks to be absolutely massive convoy. Absolutely massive. It could be just the smoke dispersing and making it look like multiple funnels. It actually looks like it's going quite quick. I'm wondering if that's a military convoy. All the smoke going quite quickly. Compare that to the smoke of the like a merchant ship, which is just gently going up. It could be that they're over the horizon and it's going gently up and then forming a long um, smoke signal like that. But we'll we'll see anyway. Let's deal with this guy first. Okay, we've got a Spanish ship. Monte Navajo. Navajo? Navajo. Yeah, Navajo. Uh, let's just see. There we go, the freighter. This freighter is unarmed. Seems not to be escorted and flies a neutral flag. The rule, prize rules allow us to sink this ship if we are certain that they are headed towards an enemy port. If we lack such certainty, ideally we should investigate what it's carrying and verify its destination before performing an inspection. We would, however, have reason to feel certain that the ship is headed to an enemy port. We may communicate rightly, sorry, right away that we intend to sink the ship. Right, let's send a delegation aboard the freighter. Uh, let's see, the captain has got leadership, cooking, gunnery. Iron Fist, Navigator, that will be useful. We'll get the nav him on there so he can do his navigation skill. Um, do we have anyone who's a Spanish speaker? Merchant could be useful. Cook, Engine Specialist, Thorough. Um, sensitive Hearing, Merchant, Radio Man, Navigator. Okay, both are. Our leadership team have um, Navigator, which is good. Okay, we'll get engine specialist and we'll get we'll get a sound guy on there as well. And the crew going. What do you need, officer? Hello. Good Spanish accent then. Your climb your crew climbs the deck and some help from the cargo ship crew. After that you're welcomed on board by the captain. He tries to communicate in Spanish but doesn't speak German too well. Sadly, this tends to be quite problematic, and nevertheless both parties manage to make somewhat basic conversation. After exchanging pleasantries, he invites you into his office so you'll be able to talk comfortably. 
in private and he'll be able to show you the documents that you may need. Let's accept his invitation. Into the captain's office. Captain leads you to his office and makes a gest uh, to make and makes a ge gesture to make yourself comfortable. He then looks around the desk, finds some papers and seems to be shipping documents. He asks if you'd like to look. Yes. You ask the captain for the documents. He states this cargo is loaded on his ship and where it's heading. Blah, 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 blah. He seems a bit nervous. Carefully analyse the documents. You can't decipher much from these documents, though since they are written in Spanish, you only manage to spot some reference to Puerto Vigo. So it's probably where they are headed. If your interpretation is correct, this ship is not involved in the war effort. Okay, so a linguist is the skill we need. Let's search the cargo hold anyway. Right, in the cargo hold, an officer from your group looked around with a freight accompanied by the talkative sailor. Hamburg girls, as always. Right, um, let's view the transported goods. Valuables. interesting valuables okay let's meet the captain um what should we do next well if he's going to vigo which is portugal i think um he's not a smuggler so we will return to our ship so the ship's here and he says he's going to the port of vigo which is that one? port of vigo which is yeah it's actually no, it's in Spain. Okay, so that's fine. I thought it was in Portugal, but no, it's just just um, in Spain. Right. Okay. So I think he's okay. Um, we know there's a convoy going this way, so we're going to set course down here. Let's get a bit of a wiggle on, and see if we can get ahead of them. Okay. Okay, periscope coming up. Um, looks like that convoy is being led by a corvette. Destroyer or another corvette over there. Big gap. Ah, we've got a merchant ship there. So it's not it's not the military convoy I thought it might have been. Another aircraft carrier, but no. Um, we've got a merchant ship there. We've got a, another Empire ship there in what looks to be a C3. That could be a good target. And then we... hang on. We've got a cruiser. Okay, we do have a capital ship. We've got a county class cruiser. Then we've got another C3. Another Empire. A Liberty ship. Empire ship. Another Empire Corvette. Empire ship. Can't quite make out what's behind it. Probably another one. And is that your lot? And then we've got uh, what's over there? Another Corvette. So, right. Well, we've got a chance to hit a Royal Navy County class cruiser. Which is. You don't see. Let's get the periscope down a bit. Um, French, United Kingdom, right, we're going to go military, not battleship, corvette, no, cruisers, county class cruiser, there we go, it's 10,000 tons, and it's not going to count because it's not a, we only get credited with merchant tonnage, but still, now velocity we know is 7 knots, reported by our other U, but we could potentially do a speed check, just to get that confirmed, but 7 knots seems right. Yes, so the two C3 freighters at the back also look tempting, but um, to get a, another capital ship would certainly certainly look good in the old logbook. Yeah, expensive things to make, and it takes a while to make a cruiser, so... Is the county class... Is that classed as a heavy cruiser? I like, would I double check that? In my head it's a light cruiser, but it looks quite substantial. Might well be a, a heavy cruiser, actually. No, it's... what is it? Cr 
cruiser. 10,000 tons. No, that's got to be a light cruiser, isn't it? Right, let's get the range. Two thousand eight hundred meters. Okay, just have a look. Yeah, the county class was a class of heavy cruisers built for the Royal Navy in the years between First and Second World Wars. They were the first post-war cruisers constructed by the Royal Navy, and were designed within the limits of the Washington Naval Treaty of nineteen twenty-two. Such ships with limit, uh, such can't put my teeth in such ships with a limited to uh, ten thousand tons standard displacement and 8 inch caliber main guns and may be referred to as treaty cruisers. The term heavy cruiser was not defined until the London Naval Treaty of 1930. There we go. So it is a, it's a heavy cruiser. Right, uh, course looks to be probably about there. Right, Got the TDC ticking away, seven knots, the range, and that'll be coming down. Um, coming up to 90 degrees to port. That's tracking nicely. Torpedoes wise, we've got T2, T2, T1, T1. I reckon. Rohr 1, bewässern. Rohr 2, bewässern. What's the. 5.26 meters is the draft. Let's put that for five point. Let's put that in three meters then. And we'll stick those two as magnetic. And then we'll fire two more. Um, fire two more with uh, on the surface. Four torpedoes should be enough to do this cruiser. Uh, and then we'll dive instantly and uh, be away, get the reloads done. And we should be good. Coming up to the best point to fire. Right, tubes one and two. Fire. Close. Three and four. Three. Four. Four. On the surface. Three and four, fire. Close. Tube three away. Tube four away. Right. Okay, confirmed. We can hear the ship sinking and breaking up on the hydrophone. Um, so we seem to have got three hits. I think the dispersion between the, the two sets of torpedoes was probably, or the two torpedoes, were a little bit too large. Um, I think the magnetic ones, we got one hit, but and the surface ones, we got two hits. But um, yeah, I think we may just needed to narrow the angle a little bit to... Uh, Make sure both pairs of torpedoes found their mark. But, there we go. A heavy cruiser to our logbook, about 10,000 tonnes of warships uh, tonnage. Which is, um, yes, we won't get credit from the BDU, but we 
but we will get credit from the video if you know what I mean. You know, that, that's not what our objective is. Our objective is to starve Britain out by hitting all the trade shipping, but if we take out a couple of their capital ships along the way, then, you know, it's certainly good for morale. We're down here at 160 metres. A couple of corvettes going by. I may just let them uh, sail on by and then we'll um, get ahead of the convoy once more and set up for those um, merchant ships. Probably we'll see what's on the far side of the actual convoy actually because uh, we may be able to attack the two C3 freighters from that side. And also on the far side was also the, the Liberty freighter wasn't it? So they would be, probably be our targets. Um, the C3s would probably give two torpedoes each to make sure that we can get the kill uh, and the Liberty probably the same again. Uh, this is not a position where we can surface and uh, finish them off with the deck gun with all these destroyers and corvettes in the area. Ah, uh, alarm's gone, they've just spotted them. We've uh, managed to get ahead of the convoy. Heading south once again, there they are. And we're on the far side of what we were last time. So, uh, hopefully, there they are. Nice. All the escort ships will be on the other side because that's where we attacked from last time. They don't seem to have got back into their position. No, they don't. So, excellent. We've got... Uh, never mind about that. We've got a Liberty or a C3 there. Oh, that was Liberty. That's a C3. A couple of Empire ships. And another uh, C3 freighter there. Nice. All right, we're just going to move a little bit closer to get in a really nice position, hopefully to uh, get some clean kills. Hopefully the torpedoes have been almost completed loading. Good stuff. Uh, that first C3, I'm going to let... There he is over there. I'm going to let it go because um, we've got two big ships here quite close together and these would be the opportune ones to have a shot at. Um, so first of all, we'll target uh, this one there. Oh, what have they got? Guns, okay. Anti-aircraft guns by the looks of it. Right, that um, is, is that British? It is British. It's not military. It's civilian. Uh, it's not a coastal boat. It's not a fishing boat. It's a freighter. Yes, it is. And it looks like a C3 freighter. Get that recognized straight away. So this has got 7,800 tons displacement, roughly. Probably going to be seven knots, but we'll just confirm since we disrupted the convoy last time. Seven knots it is indeed, right. Get the range. Three thousand two hundred. And the course is about that. Can't quite make out the name. What's it? Empire? Empire Cromwell, I think it is. Um, right. Estimated distance impact 2,700 meters. Let's get. Um, that's a T1. That's, okay, let's just get these two loaded down. Dispersion. Oh, hang on. What's the uh, length of this ship? Length is 143 and a bit meters. Okay. 143 meters. So that's 140 there. I'll pop that there. Good. Um, 3.1, 2.4. I'm going to reduce that a little bit more after the last one. Let's have a look. A little bit of time yet before they're ready to go. We're going to fire at that one and then we're going to quickly um, switch to having a shot at this Liberty ship here. The SSAB Hammond. Seems to be seem to name uh, their ships that quite often, the Americans, but uh, right, let's give it a little bit of time, almost there, one more 
revolution of this to get to there. So I'm going to fire these two torpedoes at this ship. Fire. Tube one. Away. Tube two. Away. Right. Now let's lock on to this one here. Get this quickly identified. Now this is a Liberty. Seventh and the speed we know is doing seven knots distance. Sixteen hundred meters. Probably about right actually. Okay, and this one all locked in. Tube four still hasn't been completed, so um, we're gonna fire Tube 3 on our own. Okay, Tube 4 is a long way from being ready. So Tube 3, fire. So, torpedoes away. Two at the C3, one at the Liberty. They should strike fairly close together. It's a hit on the C3. Will we get a second one? Second hit on the C3, nice. Right, quickly switching back to the Liberty. Hopefully they're not going to react. Torpedo should be striking home any second now. Maybe I didn't calculate that quite right. There we go. <laughs> okay, that was a few seconds out. Okay, we got a good hit on the SS AB Hammond. Fire's breaking out in the foredeck and round the, the bridge as well. Let's have a look at this. Two good hits there. See, the mast is down. And I think she's she's definitely, yeah, she's definitely going down at the the, uh, the fore, isn't she? In the bow. So that's good to see. And this one, although burning, seeing watching the waterline, the painted waterline, she doesn't seem to be altering too much. Um, disappointingly, this one, however. The Empire Cromwell is almost underwater. The name badge, anyway. So I think think the C3s are gonna. What about you, though? You seem to be okay. Tube 4 still not finished loading. Goodness me. Although, no. I think she's fine. I would, would want to get another torpedo into her, to be fair. Um... Let's do another speed check on the Hammond, because I think she's slowed down significantly. She's She has slowed down significantly. Four knots, there we go. Tube four, come on Tube 4, what are you doing? Uh, has the other ship sunk by now? Doing that speed check, no she's still there. But uh, she's. I wonder if she's, aban she's been abandoned. Okay, so we might need to uh, finish that off with a deck gun when all else is cleared out of the area. Um, but for now, where is this? Where is this bloody ship gone? There she is. Although she is lower in the water, you can't see the painted uh, line anymore. Tube 4 is still not ready. Tube 4 is now finally ready. It hasn't been warmed up. If we, uh, so T2, a T2, so we can't adjust the speed. So, what the hell? Are we still locked on? Four knots. Oh, we'll do another range. But she's moved out of the, uh, the way a little bit now, isn't she? 2.1, tube 4, fire. Nose! That's a bit of a hope, hit to no, nothing. It's not a great angle. Um, we should probably those torpedoes coming in to be loaded. See if we can set up for, say, this ship here. Oh, we did manage to get snagger with that shot. Serious damage. Oh yes, look at the fires that erupted on the back there. Okay, that was that was a cold torpedo, but it certainly seemed to have done the business. Nice. I think I think the SSAB Hammond is uh, is a goner.
Glad I fired that speculative shot now. Meanwhile, two more torpedoes are being loaded and they're loading the other two. We could maybe get one of those warmed up. I'm just going to wait to see when this one looks like she's a goner. The fire is not going to be put out. And she will sink beneath the waves. And that is our 7,000 tons in one ship. Happy days. Okay, she's a little bit closer now. We got um, T1 without flooded. Make sure this is all locked on. Um, she's 1700 now, so about there. Angular Bear was. Oh, no, this is going to be. What was it? What were we up to? 89. Nice. Right, um, speed, yes, yes, yes. Right, tube one, fire. Nose. Right, because she's she's zigzagging, um, we've uh, we've missed our shot. Obviously, the sh the c computer targets that the ship is going to go sailing from point A to point B in a straight line at a certain speed, at a certain distance, and it can calculate the uh, intercept point. When the ship is zigzagging, obviously it, 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 it completely alters that calculation, and that has resulted in our torpedo sailing forward of that ship. I guess one thing we could do, if we wanted to, is alter that by slowing its pace. So if we go for, say, five knots, or six knots, we may be able to compensate for the fact that it's going like this and not in a straight line. Tube two, fire. That's a speculative shot again. Uh, I haven't really calculated that very well. Uh, that's just a gut feeling. But we'll see how that goes. And um, if not, we'll just let this convoy sail on and then we'll surface and destroy the remnants of that. Uh, C3. Nice. See, it's not it's not a hard and fast rule, but if you knock a couple of knots off, if they're zigzagging, two to three knots, um, you can often catch it, depending on see how much they're. Uh, Zigzagging is depends on how much you need to drop off, so a bit of a gut reaction on that one, but it worked, and we got the Carolus has been sunk. Now there's just that one. We could probably stick a torpedo into that if we wanted to, and it's probably the safest way to get rid of that one actually. Bye. Yeah, I would. I was tempted to surface and use the deck gun like we normally would, but the waves are quite choppy. You can see the spray coming off the waves with the high winds. And of course, there's a lot of escorts in this area. May not necessarily be here right now, but they will be uh, in the area. And yeah, it'll be some time before we can safely surface the boat. So, torpedo away. Torpedo will be near to the target now. Please don't have a dud. We haven't got a countdown. There we go. Yeah, that looked good. That looked good. I think she's finished. There we go. She's gone. Nice. And we are safely hidden under the waves and the escorts are none the wiser to where we are. So um, that is a success by anyone's books. Three merchants and a heavy cruiser sunk. Uh, I'll give the crew a bit of time to reload the torpedoes. We'll take a stock check on how many we've got. And maybe we'll farm this a little bit more.
Ah, welcome back everyone. Right, we've managed to sail on the surface throughout the night and in the early morning of the 2nd of January um, we have got ahead of them and if I turn the periscope to the right direction there they are, look. We've got another C3 ship, Empire ships, Empire ships um, no sign at the moment of the escort which is interesting a uh, bit of an update on torpedoes. We've got two in the forward tubes and we've got two for the rear tubes. That's all we've got left. Uh, we've got a couple of ships sailing behind us as well. So we can certainly try and use the rear tube. Hmm. But no escorts at the moment. They obviously, the first attack has delayed them and they've been searching for us since then. But I'm going to try and set up an, an attack for for this ship here. C3 and uh, see if we can get another large kill. Okay, a little bit of time has passed. Uh, we do actually only have the one torpedo in the forward tube. Sorry, I, I quickly looked at the inventory image and obviously I had a picture in the stores, picture in the uh, tube 3, but obviously that was showing that the torpedo in the stores was being loaded into tube 3. So we've only got one torpedo which is not ideal for such a large ship um, but we're gonna have a shot anyway and then hopefully get some rearward shots we can always surface the, with the deck gun uh, it looks nice and calm out here and no sign of any escorts at the moment okay we've just gone past the best Lost! solution for firing so we'll fire that torpedo and we'll swing the gun the, sorry, the guns. We'll swing the periscope round and target. This is the closest one coming behind us. Empire Baxter. Okay, tube five is ready to go. Fire. Good. Torpedo away. Obviously that may slow down as, as we've hit the C3 freighter in front. How is that doing? It's listing. If they abandon ship, then we can certainly um, surface the boat. They've got some nasty deck guns on there, so I'm, I don't want to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with them because they've got more of them than us and they'll probably blow us out of the water. They can afford to take a little bit of damage. We cannot. Oof, got a hit. She has started to slow down a little bit, but we still managed to get a hit. She's got fire on the bow, which is nice. Hopefully, that may or may not be the end of her. You can see the um, stern is definitely lifting up. You can see more red from the, the waterline paint mark. Taking on water at the front. Yeah, I think I think the, the rate that that's going down, she's a goner. Empire Baxter, and there's a fire breaking out on the stern as well. Yeah, she's gone. Good. Nice kill there. The ship behind us. Any sign of these escorts? It's looking clear. It's got a couple of Empire ships. Maybe we go with the deck gun. If this one is abandoned. There's fires. I can't quite make out if uh, I don't know if she's been abandoned or not. Let's move a little closer to have a, a better look. Okay, here we go. We got some ships on the 
on the horizon. Let's see if we can get um, one of these sinking. I need to get the water mark. A little bit high, but hopefully we're there in the ballpark. So we drop of the shell. Oh, I didn't see where that one went. No, nor that one. Firing too high, obviously. That one. Oh, that one smacked right into the bridge. Okay. I was aiming far too high. Ah, oh, smack on the waterline. Beautiful. Get some at the rear. A bit high. She's sinking. Excellent. Right. So we switch our attentions to this one. Oof. Warning shot. Heal two. Don't think they will. Boom. Right on the waterline. Beautiful. See, that's a better fire. That's got to be gone. Yeah, fires break out all over that one. Right, there's one behind us. Can you see that? No, not really. We are turning. Only 20 high explosives left. Try and get anything on fire. There goes something falling off the ship. Wonder if that was vital, who knows. There we go. Firing around the, the funnel. It's a lot of hot stuff around there, so. Alright, let's see if we can get some shots into the stern. So one's over there, one's over there. We might just be able to. 17 shots, we might be able to um, get her, but let's make sure. We kill this one first. No point trying to get another one and letting two down. Well, that's not going anywhere, is it? Fire on deck. Fire on deck. Nice. Got ten more armor pit. Uh, high explosives, actually. Keep these fires burning. It used to be the stern was the weak point, but um, it seems to have been uh, resolved over the recent times. So the fires out. Only five shells left. Fires back in. Fire again. A couple of shells left. Do need to hit the same pit around the funnel, which seems to be the weak spot. Don't know where that went, that could have sailed over. And we're out. That's it. That's all we've got. We do, of course, have the anti-aircraft gun which we can use to uh, rattle just to find, finish her off okay she's still there let's uh... Fire on deck. that's what we want, get some fires going hopefully that will put her to bed write your name in the side Got to be careful, there is crew there, so I don't want to blow their heads off. We get some fires going there, nice, that should be the end of her. Go on, sink, sink! There she goes, right, uh... Yeah. 
Now, since we've come about and uh, finished this ship off, that's where the ship is completely lost. Ah, oh, there you go. Right there. Can you see it? Uh, we'll see if we can catch her down. If not, we'll, uh, we'll head back to port. And campaign objectives progressed. Um, yes, one of three. We haven't got the... Uh, we obviously didn't find the the ships that were hiding and trying to get through and smuggling goods through, but um, we found a British convoy and we sunk that, so that was pretty good. So, the SSAB Hammond was sunk, of course. The ship was headed for Liverpool from Freetown, with, sorry, Liverpool to Freetown, with medical supplies in the cargo holds. 7,182 tonnes registered in the USA. The Carolus was sunk. Registered in Canada, was carrying raw resources from Liverpool to Freetown. Its registered tonnage was 4,639. Empire Cromwell was sunk. Registered tonnage of 7,846 tonnes of medical supplies. Liverpool to Freetown was its route, as registered in the UK. Uh, the Empire Baxter was sunk. Registered in the UK, carrying tea from Liverpool to Freetown. Registered tonnage of 3,011 tonnes. Empire Mallard was sunk. Um, Liverpool to Freetown. Utilities in the cargo holds, 7,777 tonnes. It was registered in the UK. Empire Cabot was sunk, 2,907 tonnes of medical supplies from Liverpool to Freetown, registered in the UK. And the Empire Falcon, registered in the UK, was carrying real resources from Liverpool to Freetown, registered tonnage of 5,978 tonnes. Empire Seaman was sunk, 3,374 tonnes of medical supplies from Liverpool to Freetown, was registered in the UK. Boom. So there we go. Mission summary. Patrol summary, I suppose. Tonnage sunk, 42,714 tonnes. Time at sea, 20, 23 days, 11 hours, and 6,382.6 kilometres travelled. Um, that is, of course, 42,000 tonnes of merchant tonnage. It doesn't take into account the Dorsetshire, Dorsetshire the county class cruiser that we sank to begin with. Happy days. All ticks of our requirements. We set off on the 18th of December. We have returned on the 11th of January in the new year. 1942, everyone. This is the year we'll win the war. I'm sure of it. You mark my words. Right. So that was another fine patrol. I'm happy with that. Another capital ship, County Class Cruiser, and 42,714 tonnes of merchant shipping. Happy days. Right. We'll give the crew a well-earned break and get the boat refitted, refueled, rearmed, and we'll be good to go again next time. Thanks ever so much for watching. Take care. I'll see you then. Bye-bye.